You got it planned out, ready to roll? Yeah. You know what you're gonna say? No, but yeah. All right. All right. All right. So, Whatever. <laughs> Look at that hair <laughs> flowing in the wind, Buck. <laughs> Go ahead, whenever you're ready, boss. Right. So it was halfway through uh, the early season of April, and uh, Shane's had permission on this property for quite a few, few quite a few years now, and uh, we decided to go in to a spot where a lot of these birds roost. There's a creek that runs through there. Um, it's on a big cattle farm, and a lot of these birds like to roost up the river in this little section of timber that there is. And it's pretty hard to get in there in the morning without spooking birds out of the roost. So we decided to go in there for an evening hunt. You have to get in there pretty early because the birds move from uh, the east to the west coming in through this section of timber. And uh, the landowner told us that she's been seeing quite a few longbeards out there in the cattle pasture throughout the day, uh, sometimes pinching out there from the morning in the roost. But uh, so that night we got out there, um, wasn't any birds in the field, which was good. We were able to sneak down, get on the side of the riverbank, uh, set up pretty good. And we were working a group of birds on the opposite side of the river, which we had permission on as well. And while we were working these birds in, they kind of hung up with the hens that they were following, probably 75, 80 yards across the river. And when we were sitting there, we had a group of hens come in behind us and start messing with our decoys. No toms came in with them. Um, and the birds across the river ended up staying out of shooting distance, unfortunately. Started getting later in the evening, started getting a little dark. Didn't have any birds talking to us. So we started thinking that, you know, the night was over. Uh, probably started packing things up. We were cutting close on shooting hours. And we look up into the cow pasture and here's one single bird all by himself. We're working down the face of the woods. And it ended up being a long beard. And he didn't make a single noise. Didn't gobble once, didn't even want to look at us. And he wouldn't even pop his fan up, wouldn't do nothing. Ended up working down the side of the fence row and walked straight to us down a little lane and walked right at me to about five to 10 yards. Didn't make a noise, and I mean, the rest is history. The, the video will show it. I mean, showed his face, and the old Remington put a hurt on him, blew him over backwards. Um, that That is still the biggest bird I've ever harvested. Uh, it had an 11 and three quarter inch beard with inch and, uh, what was it, inch and just over, just about inch and a half hook. So, I mean, it, it was a good bird. At first, I wasn't gonna shoot him. I was talking to Shane when he was coming. I was like, Shane, I don't know if I shoot him. I don't know if he's that big. Well, he ended up being the biggest one I've ever shot. So, I almost took my bow that night. I'm kind of upset I didn't because I still haven't shot a turkey with my bow. But, oh well, I can't complain. It's still uh, set my tag on a, on a turkey, Michigan turkey. So, I'll take it. I'll take it. Rather be successful than not successful. That is for sure.
That's a done deal. <laughs> Oh my. Oh my. Those are some daggers. Right Jacob. There. <laughs> yes, sir. So, this next hunt, uh, it was the year 2019. Opening day, didn't have any success. Had a couple birds roosted, but ended up flying down and going the opposite direction. Um, and on my way out that morning, I was driving home, and on another field, I had permission on. There ended up being a strutter out there with a hen. And this was later in the morning, it was probably 10 o'clock in the morning, 9, 10 o'clock in the morning. So, you know, it's one of those things where you don't know if that bird is roosted right close to that field and flying down and he's out there all morning or if he's roosted back further in that section and flying down working his way out there later in that morning. So, that night I ended up calling Shane and I uh, said, hey, I got a bird that's on this property, you want to go out there in the morning? And he's like, yeah, sure, why not? You know, Shane shot a turkey that morning, opening morning, so... He, he was, you know, cameraman for the rest of the season. So we ended up getting out there the second morning. Uh, got up early, got in there just in case if he was on that field edge. And set up, we'll start breaking daylight. And we had a few birds talking off the roost pretty early. and But they were way back in off the section. Um, so right off the bat, we knew it was probably, probably going to be later in the morning by the time that bird's going to come in. Um, they hit the ground, got locked mouth, didn't talk to us, and Shane decided to call, call the morning, so he decided to lay down on the ground and take a nice little snoozer. And it was probably about 8.30, 8.45, Shane's snoring on the ground. Um, I'm sitting there watching this field, and I could have swore I heard a turkey drumming. And I look out the window, and there wouldn't be anything out there. I'm like, all right. Five minutes later, I heard the same exact noise, and I look up, and there's still nothing out there. A couple minutes later, I heard the same exact noise. I'm like, I'm not, it's not even worth my time to look, and all of a sudden, I hear this turkey start beating the crap out of our decoy. I'm like, oh my gosh, there's a tom in our decoys. Uh, so here I am kicking Shane on the ground. I was like, Shane, there's a tom in our decoys right now. And this this turkey put on a show for us, man. I mean, he, was, he stood in our decoys for easily 20 minutes, just beating their crap out of that Jake Avian. And I just bought a new 10 gauge that year and I was excited to put, a, put it to use. And after that, that time, you know, messed around the decoys for a while, I decided to uh, let the 10 gauge do its job. Well, it's the second day now, April 23rd. The first day wasn't too successful for me. We had Shane over here, he shot a bird first thing yesterday morning. We roosted a few birds on this property last night. There's about five or six of them out here. They end up being farther in this section than what we thought they were going to be. Um, a little lockjaw this morning. They weren't too too talkative, but there was a bird out here yesterday at 9 o'clock. So we're just going to stick it out. We're going to see what happens. Hopefully it comes back through.
we got her done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just like it. Good stuff. I had to wake Shane up from his cat nap. They <laughs> were goddamn palm strut in the decoys. <laughs> Turns out Ugh. turkeys don't like 10 gauges at 10 yards. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and, and, as you see, it clapped his head <laughs> bad. Yeah, that was a good one. But one thing uh, I just wanted to talk about for a second Jake and I, we've done a lot of hunting together over, I don't know, the last really like 10 years. Um, you know, we kind of grew up a little bit together back in the day when he didn't have his driver's license. You know, we were a little bit older, and uh, so he you know he'd always be tagging along with us. And he's a killing Everywhere fool. I go. Yeah, he's a killing fool, and he he's got his own nice stuff now and knows what the heck he's doing. He freaking teaches me things these days. So you're gonna see a lot of Jake Anders in the coming up episodes, or you know, throughout the however long we tend to do this or whatever. But he's a killer right here, ladies and gentlemen. Learn from the best.